Showtime. Well, I was thinking people would pop in right away. And they are. Okay. How do I just add everyone? There we go. Oh, that's right. Hey. Oh. oh, there we go. Okay. Good morning. There are a lot of people in the waiting room. As you join today, if you just please put where you're from. Uh, and your role in the chat, that would be great just as a kind of a welcome here as we get started. Hey, thank you. A lot of coaches, classroom teachers, interventionists. We have someone in Angola. That's interesting. Angola. That is interesting. But isn't there, there's, oh yeah, the one, uh, thanks for joining everyone. We'll just take another minute or two to let people get into the room. See a couple familiar names here too. Shout out to Hudson and Marshall. Well, that's a Kentucky folks. That was our last conference, by the way, it was the Kentucky Center for Mathematics. Haven't been back to a conference since. <laughs> right there, leaving out of Kentucky in the middle of March of 2020. And suddenly things changed. Take another minute or so. Sure, we have people joining. Are, are you going to share your slides first? And I'll, I'll go ahead and okay. switch over to introductions. There are people joining as we go. And thank you again for just adding where you're from and your role in the chat. Starting with the thank you. My name is Tamara Mack. I'm the lead communications here at Forefront Education. We also have Paul King on our call today. He's also part of our Forefront team. He leads our school partnerships. And I have the pleasure of introducing uh, David Woodward. David Woodward has over two decades of experience as a classroom teacher and a math specialist, most re recently in Boulder Valley School District in Colorado. Uh, he's also presented at conferences nationally and he's a founder of Forefront Education, a company that was started with the premise that the most important information about student learning is found when you're listening to them count out loud, read out loud in the time that you spend evaluating their work in classroom assessments. 
you know, Forefront provides tools to systematically collect this information and elevate it across schools. And today he's presenting in his capacity as the lead author of the Universal Screener for Number Sense project. All right, well, thank you very much, Tamara. <clears throat> Just to let everyone know, I will keep the chat open in the side window as I start going through the presentation. Please feel free to um, add questions and comments in there as we go along. Um, uh, we'll have Tamara and Paul will also help to keep an eye on that um, if I happen to skip anything. So um, it's I, I like to keep these interactive as, as much as possible with this many people. It's best to kind of do it in this webinar format. So we're kind of locked into the chat, but please feel free to add in there as you will. So yeah, this idea of screeners in an RTI MTSS system, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna really kind of try to deep, delve as deeply into this idea as possible um, today in the limited time that we have. Let's see, there we go. So during today's presentation, I'm gonna start with this idea of screening assessments, where that comes from, purposes and practices, and um, and then go into this idea of the value of interviews, and then um, some some. Uh, a document that uh, prepared for selecting a screener for your district. The Universal Screeners for Number Sense, UNS, USNS History and Structure, just a little bit about what that is. And then um, some RTI MTSS, and then taking the results from the screeners. And then this question at the end of kind of who's learning. So um, with that, uh, Russell Gersten, if you're not familiar with this name, Russell Gersten is really um, someone who's been around for quite a while in the um, MTSS, RTI world and uh, special education. And uh, this quote I grabbed a long time ago, With, without universal screening, there is no RTI. You might be able to flip that on the head and say, you know, without any RTI, there would be no universal screening either. Um, but uh, certainly an interesting uh, quote. And in digging through some of the things that um, I always referred to when, when looking and developing screeners, I, I found this quote as well. A growing body of evidence suggests that there are several valid and reliable approaches for screening students in the primary grades. And all of these approaches target aspects of what, we, what is often referred to as number sense. Um, so this, I, I'm sure that I read this as, as we were writing these screeners a long time ago, um, and, and it really stood out to me. I'm just going to float this idea right now in this question of screeners, because there's so many screeners that have suddenly come onto the market, especially in the last few years. And there's a lot of um, assessments that have been repurposed as screeners. And um, I think one of the troubles that I have with that repurposing of the screeners that I see out there and the screeners that people are telling me that they're using is that they really have not paid attention to this idea of really focusing on number sense. Um, and so this is something that I kind of want to contrast with some of those other strategies that are out there. So Tamara, I think we have a poll. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and launch a poll. We have just over 70 participants now. So we'll probably take a couple minutes for us to collect those results. But the poll is, what does math screening look like in your district? So just take a minute, please, to share. Uh, what it looks like in, in your district or in your school and how you are screening students. We're about halfway there here. Thank you for answering this question. And now we're about 80%, 80 so I'll, I'll just allow one more minute. Hey, we're hovering at 90% participation here. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna end there and I'm gonna share our results here. Okay, please let me know if you see those results. If you're not seeing those results now, please just share that in chat. David, do you see my do you see the results I see, from the I poll? See the here? Results. I'm not sure. Can somebody, can somebody if, if give us a thumbs up or something in the chat if you do see the results? Okay, okay. good. They did appear for people. That's awesome. That's it's a lot flatter than I thought. Um, honestly, I, I didn't I didn't anticipate it to be quite um, quite that spread out evenly. 
Um, and I would be curious to know what all the others are. Um, oh, I can only see zero for all the answers is what Christy says. Let me, I'll, I'll just kind of run through them. We've got um, about 60%, four, four of the users are, are actually using the universal screeners, um, the, the, the universal screeners for number sense. 16% have another tool and then they combine with the universal screeners for number sense. And then there's the, the largest group, 32%, um, 20 of the participants here today who do, do not have a screener in place at all. Um, and, then, um, and then there's the, the, those varieties. Um, and so, uh, and then there's the other group. And so, yeah, I'm kind of, once again, kind of curious about that other group, but, but uh, um, great. So that's very helpful for us to understand um, where, where this audience is at. So thank you very much for responding to that. So I'm gonna go on in here to the, uh, the presentation. And, and one of the things that you hear about in screening when people talk about screeners, they, they really, and, and honestly, it does kind of go back to this idea of, we do this in medicine, why don't we do it in education? And universal screening is very much like, you know, thought of as, as taking blood pressure and, you know, weighing. It's like when you check into the, to the doctor's office, let me strap on the, the arm cuff and see what you weigh today, check your O2 levels and your pulse really quickly. But I'd like to ask this question. Okay, so are you done then? What, what doctor really takes the blood pressure without also talking to the patient? It, you, want, you want to do more than just do that, more than just finding out the blood pressure in, in terms of finding out about students and, and things like this. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and we're gonna watch a screening assessment. So this is a screening assessment that I um, um, administered with this student. Um, just last summer, I think it was. And uh, as you're watching this, the, the, the following slide that we're gonna come to is just gonna ask you, what did you learn about the students? So think about that as you come through, we're gonna have responses to the, um, this question of what did, what did you learn about this student in, in the, uh, the chat afterwards. So here we go. All right. So what I want to start with is just some counting. Just let me hear you count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen
I am correct. You're so okay. All right. Now I've got eight counters there, okay? How many are there? Eight. There are eight counters there. What I'm going to do is take two of them back out. How many counters are still under there? Uh... Which one is it? Seven. seven or six? Seven. Seven? How do you know seven? I am I know you're a smart man, but let me think about it. There were we had we had eight, right? Wait, six. Okay. Yeah? I don't know. I'm just choosing things. Okay, would well, you see if you can figure it out so that you're really certain? I saw you doing some thinking there. So let's let's do it one more time from the beginning, okay? We got eight counters, right? And now I'm gonna take two of them back out. Okay. Well, pick one. Six. I think there's seven. Six. Seven, 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 seven. All right, all right. Seven. Okay, we're gonna move on. All right. Now, I've got some bears. How many bears are there? One, two, three, four, five. They look like elephants. Did One, two, three, four, five, six. This is a difficult question. No. That there, are, there are, how many are there? Count them carefully. Five. Five bears. Okay, there's five bears there. Some of them are hiding. Um, right? There's one there. How many are hiding? Okay. How many bears are there? Five. Five. Okay. Now, some of them are hiding. Two. One. Two. How many do you see? Three. Okay. So how many are hiding? Two. Okay. Now here, ten dots. Ten. Right. Now I have three more. How many are there all together? Thirteen. Would you say? Thirteen. Okay. How did you know that was thirteen? Because ten plus three. Like, how have you not heard of this? There's a legend <laughs> about this. There's a legend. Well, let me hear the legend. It's about um, when 10 is divided with 3. This is like in the 1920s, I think. In the 1920s? Okay. And um, like the even side, 10 plus 8 is 13. But guys actually said, it's not 13. Eight, 10 plus 8 is not 13. It's three plus ten. Ten plus three. That's a really wonderful legend. I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of got the feeling that you did. All right. All right. Delightful. Um, uh, if you would, please, let's let's think about that. So what did you learn about this kid? Right well, go to the next slide, please, right. David. Go to the next slide. There we go. What did we learn about the student? In that uh, in that interview, tell us tell us just to put a few things into the chat if you would please. I just read some of these out loud so we can count on to find a total. He has one to one matching when he's counting. He's able to decompose, able to recite, able to do one-on-one -on -one correspondence, weaker in visualizing. One-to-one -one correspondence is poor, can count by one starting from a number other than one. It sounds like lots of learnings here. <laughs> it's a sense of humor, <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah. Counts by 10 uh, with a melody. <laughs> confident. And confident. I like that, he does, he does, he does feel confident. Um, I thought it was interesting the way he kind of guessed at that first one too, when, when there was the addition one, you get the four plus three and he's just like five, no six. And he, and he feels like he needs to guess that before he, 
before it. Yeah, good, nice. Last lacks the facility with the structuring through five. Good one as well. Yeah. Awesome. So so you get you get a whole wealth of information um, from listening to the student. As as I was you know watching this one and, and thinking about we we you know we've been talking with a lot of people about screening recently and and there was about twenty percent of the people in this um, original poll that we gave um, who were uh, saying that they you know they use some other screener um, in a, in addition to the universal screeners for number sense they might use a star math or. A, a maps or something like this, which I, once again, I think is debatable whether those are really truly screeners, but they kind of use them as a screening measure to, to, to identify those students who are in the bottom percentiles or whatever it might be. My guess is that this student would not have ended up in that bottom percentile. Just, just kind of a, a guess from having watched this thing. I don't think that this is a student where we would have said, oh golly, we've got troubles. And yet at the same time, we have all of this stuff that we learned from him just from giving him this rather short assessment. And even, even though I had gone back and kind of, hey, let me hear you think about that, process that again, let's do this problem again, these kinds of things. And, and we get a legend in the end, right? Um, it still took only about five minutes. Um, and we do kind of target um, five minutes as the goal for these assessments um, is right around in there. So thank you for, for enjoying that with us. <laughs> You know, we, I, I just, just one other thing, just to put this out there, just because I think it, it is really interesting. I mean, I don't know how many um, assessments you've given in math, but there are very few that really make me smile. And this one, you know, especially this kid in, in, in particular, really, you know, it's a delight. It's a delight. So, all right, moving on. So when you're looking for a screeners, and I know that there's a lot of people that are out looking for screeners these days. Um, this, um, is, we, I organized this um, in collaboration with um, a number of other leaders in the Colorado school systems. We were, uh, we had a, um, a group of leaders in the metro area that was called COMIT, uh, which stands for the Colorado Metropolitan Math Intervention Team. And it was a, a, a group of people that were getting together on a regular basis to talk about our common issues in intervention and in, um, in attempting to uh, support all students, but in particular those who struggle. And as we were um, trying to help districts in the metro area and around Colorado with, with evaluating screening tools and thinking about this kind of thing, this, this came out of that. So um, we thought about the attributes of the screener itself, like is it efficient, right? That was obviously something that needed to be in place. Can it be administered to all students? Um, we do have uh, translations of the, the number sense screeners into Spanish um, and are interested in getting other languages in there as well. Um, but uh, certainly something that can be given to all students. Does it matter, measure critical skills known to be strong indi indicators that predict student performance? And this is one of those things that I think is really important when you're looking for screeners. I mean, are you, are, is, it, is it a general assessment of mathematics or are we focusing in on critical skills? Does the screener narrow the focus for future diagnostics? So, so is it sort of, you know, does it point you in a nice direction to try to figure out where you're going to start with this child or does it just sort of say, oh no, we're just gonna have to give another test? And then has the screener um, been proven as valid um, as a reliable measure and, and valid measure, I should say, too, is, is, is that question. Is there a way to, then from the, the data side, right? Can you can you think take the data and compare performance to peers? That is, is it norm referenced? Um, can it also serve as a tool for tier one progress monitoring? I think this is a really important question and um, inform tier one. Can the results inform starting points for instruction? Right? Can you right away turn around and say, I know what I'm going to do with this child tomorrow? Do, they, do the, the results identify students who are needing further evaluation? That kind of goes to that other side too. And then um, does it inform tier one? Right? Does it inform the whole system? Or is this just sort of something that's only going to be useful for a, 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 a certain fraction of the work of schools? So thinking about your tools, um, this is a nice kind of you know, question to kind of run through as you're evaluating your screening tools. So a little bit of information here about the Universal Screeners for Number Sense. Uh, these were uh, first introduced in 2007. That's when we started working on them. The original question that we kind of came away with was, um, hey, if you only had a minute with a student, what would you ask them to do? If you had one minute with every kid, what would you want to know? 
Um, we finally kind of brought that up to five minutes and, and, uh, and, and then, and that's what came out with the screeners that we have right now. Uh, they're definitely research-based. We went through a lot of research. Those are referenced in the actual um, document. If you've downloaded that, um, you'll see a lot of the research that we looked at over time in order to, um, to create them. They were, they're very tightly aligned, especially the fall assessments with the Advantage Math of Math Recovery is the, uh, is the organization. If you're not familiar with the United States Math Recovery Council, I encourage you to take a look at their work. They've got fantastic professional development opportunities and this, um, these tools align with those. Um, they're also very much informed by the theories of realistic math education and the use of contexts and accessible contexts for students to be able to come in and understand the problems without perhaps having the formal understanding. So this idea of progressive formal formalization and mathematizing is really, um, you'll see that a lot, especially in the mid-year and the spring, but also in the fall assessments. And then of course, they're common core aligned. Um, they can be aligned with other state standards as well um, through Forefront, just in case you're interested in that. But um, definitely wanted to kind of benchmark them to that, right? To kind of, to kind of that's sort of the, the line um, that we, we use for, for deciding the levels, if you will. The structure of the screeners is that there's the fall screeners, which are completely interview-based. Then there's the mid-year and spring screeners that are a hybrid assessment design that combines interview, paper and pencil, and digital aspects. You don't have to do the digital by digital. You can also give that paper and pencil. Um, but the interview questions in the middle of the year, we tried to cut that down to size to make those really succinct. And then um, to be able to do the paper and pencil whole class then and the digital one whole class to improve the efficiency of the mid-year and the spring screeners. And then the fifth grade spring screener has no interview. It's just, it's just a paper and pencil slash digital assessment um, designed to really um, you know, think about it as a transition test to middle school, to really identify those students who are going to need additional supports in middle school and to thinking about that transition to middle school in terms of what needs to be communicated there. The performance levels, a lot of people ask about the performance levels and how this is, this is, these are determined. So first and foremost, the, the universal screeners for number sense are criterion rest, referenced assessments. That is, we're looking for those skills and measuring those skills. With Forefront as a data platform, they also provide a norm reference. So you can compare to the peer groups um, through, through Forefront um, because that's that we're constantly creating um, aggregate, aggregate groups through that. Excuse me. Uh, these are asset-based assessments. That is that we're really looking for what students know more than that they don't know. Um, and this kind of gets with this idea of the performance levels. Each of the questions is aligned to three or four performance levels so that we can think about, okay, is the student there all the way or is, you know, and very confident in this or are they approaching or are they really, you know, at the beginning of their understanding as it relates to the skill or concept? And so this idea that you're really kind of thinking about the, the child as they're growing towards proficiency is very important. Then the overall proficiency for each of the assessments is broken into four categories, and those are aligned with performance levels from each of the tasks. So essentially saying, you know, if the student is majority, they've scored threes and, and, and on the majority of the assessment, then they end up in that overall proficiency group of the highest the highest category. Um, whereas, you know, if they score lo low across the entire assessment, then they score lower. Once again, if you have the forefront and you need to have percentile bands, if you're looking for that, that's what you can get through forefront and really break that down into the different percentile bands to understand um, the performance of your kids relative to that peer group. Okay. Understanding RTI and MTSS. So it's going to shift now. Just kind of want to think about this idea of RTI and MTSS and, and the place of these universal screeners for number sense in those. So for me, no. The answer to that first question, no, it's not. MTSS is not just a new name for RTI. Response to intervention, which was introduced earlier in 2004, is this a methodology that was defined for identifying students for special education. And this is, um, and that was codified into law at the federal level for as an alternative way to identify students. 
So the idea being that if you provide targeted interventions, research-based interventions for students, that the student should be able to learn and, and other and most students will learn and we monitor that progress to see if they are, right? So students, so this idea that students are capable of learning with provided when provided with the proper supports, I think is very, very important in this RTI methodology. Um, and I oftentimes say to, to, you know, within an RTI system, the role of the interventionist is to prove that the student does not need special education. That is that you're really, your, your job is to teach that student and prove that they can learn, right? And then if all of our efforts fail, then we need to think, okay, perhaps we need to provide some special alternatives for the student and special education, therefore. Now, MTSS on the flip side of that is, is a more general idea that, that practices, that says that practice that schools put into place to provide students with supports that they need. So this is across all tiers of the the system right and that we would um, want to make sure that we're putting supports into place that are beyond um, response to intervention that is um, your special education needs are part of this whole thing but but you're you perhaps you have students that are in ESL well ESL is not a an intervention that's a part of your core program that those students need that special support or the social emotional supports that kids need and behavioral supports etc so um, in the Every Student Succeeds Act, this became codified, and so therefore um, uh, it's getting a lot of attention now, and, and they defined it as a comprehensive continuum of evidence-based systematic supports to support student needs um, and instructional decision-making. So, so this idea that it's, it's your holistic um, approach to education for students, not just for those who might be um, needing um, to be identified for special services. Um, and once again, I'll just reiterate, please, if you have questions as we go along, pop those into the chat. So the way that I like to think about this is you've got, you've got MTSS as a holistic approach to education for all students. And within that is RTI. And then within RTI, there's the special education uh, services. Um, this is the way that I think about it. Um, and, and I think that there, there probably are a variety of ways of thinking about this, but, but I think, think of the, the, the larger group being the MTSS group. Now there's also the, the famous pyramid of response to intervention, which you also see used again for the MTSS services. Um, and that is that, you know, hopefully 80 to 90% of our students are, are receiving tier one, if, instruction that is effective for all of those students. That is that you don't need, you don't need to have these targeted interventions in place um, for, for those students. And then at the same time, then, then you might have targeted interventions going on for five to 15% and then, and then this smaller group where they need significant interventions. My question on this one was always, wait, is it 5% of this school or 5% of this district. And, and, I, and I'm gonna kind of come back to that in a minute here, but, but this idea that, you know, we have some schools, we might have, we might have a distribution that looks very much like this. And yet at the same time, in some of our schools, it might be that, that, that there's a concentration of those students who need more significant interventions. And so this ability to aggregate your, your, your results across your district, um, I think is very, very important. We do have a question there, David, on yeah. your last slide. Um, where are these percentages coming from in chat? And so I, I believe that's probably related to these tiers of, of students. Tiers see. here. This is just the classic RTI. If you if you Google the tiers and the and these percentages of tiers or whatever in in anything, you'll find that that's. I don't know where they came from originally. I think that's a really really good question. But this is these are the percentages that you see. Um, uh, generally um, out there in the, um, the world. So um, I'm going to pop into forefront here for just a second. This is, this is, let me describe this really quickly here, though. What we have is, is the results of the second grade fall screeners for this current year. And I'm going to pop over here. And here's the exact same report. So here you can see we have um, uh, the 10 questions of the second grade screener. Um, question number one, 
count from 27 to 43. So what I find interesting about this first counting question, I believe that every one of the assessments in the fall starts with the counting task, um, is that this, how, how closely this kind of maps to that RTI per percentage that we just saw in that chart. Um, of those, of the about 2,000, a little bit more than 2,000 students who took the screener and, and whose data was entered into Forefront last fall, only about 10% of those students were unable to complete that count successfully. And then another 6.6% .6 of the students um, were able to do it on a second attempt. So there's that idea of, of that um, progressing towards proficiency. They didn't get it right the first time, but on that second attempt, they got it. So, um, and, and you can see that the rubric is, is in there um, as correct, but uncertain in kind of the, the this body thing here. But then there's these other questions where, it seems to be a little bit out of whack, right? That is that here we're looking at a little bit more than 40% of the students who were unable to count from 96 to 120. So for me, when I'm looking at the RTI MTSS perspective, I feel like, okay, within my school, looking at one out of 10 students or one out of 20 students who are unable to do this count down here, we probably wanna pop them into, um, you know, some targeted supports. And, um, and then if, if, if those targeted supports don't, don't work, then we need, to, we need to reevaluate, perhaps do some additional assessments, et cetera. Whereas when I'm looking at 40% of our students unable to reach that goal of first grade, which is to count to 120, that to me looks like a tier one response more than anything else. And so I think that we need to kind of think about that um, as, as we approach these ideas of where the, whether we need to kind of pull the kids aside and really target those supports and start to monitor progress, or whether we want to think about this in a tier one kind of way. Um, and somebody already answered um, the, the question there, so that's exactly right. So we do provide the second count right there at the moment. Let me hear you do that again. Similar to what I did with that, that interview that we saw earlier, where he was just counting really quickly. But, but in, in this case, I'll just, you know, if they skip a number, if they skip 13, which is for some reason a very typical number to skip, I might say, just let's try that one more time. Let me hear you just slowly, loudly. Let me hear it. We do have another question here, David. Yeah. Um, are screening tools part of the architecture for change in all tiers that align to an MTSS framework? Yes, I think so. That's certainly the way that I interpret it because, because I wanna look at, at, at progress across tier one. Is our tier one successful across the board with these, you know, these high leverage ideas? And so for this actually prompts well, um, this comparisons that I'm gonna turn on. What you can do within um, Forefront is to compare your results over a year, year over year, if you will. What now I'm looking at here is two years side by side. So here we have the results of last year's screening from the 2020 to 2021 school year, side by side with this current school year. And I'm sure what jumps out to you, certainly what jumps out to me is that performance across the board this year was worse than it was last year. Um, typically what we saw is actually from, when I look at the results going back five, 10 years, Generally, this is more the distribution that we've seen. About 5% of students unable to count to 22, or from 22 to uh, 27 to 43, rather. Usually that's around 5% of students, and then we get the other 5% students that are kind of halfway there. This year, the numbers of students unable to count uh, from 27 to uh, 43 are, have doubled. Um, so um, kind of interesting. This is comparing, uh, uh, that group of second graders last year to current second graders from this year. Yes, that's correct. So, so not a matched cohort by any means. And in fact, there's different districts and you can see that quite a few more students came in this year. We've um, got a larger group, but, but we see this kind of pattern throughout the screeners um, in all of this fall. Um, and interestingly, I think, um, is this one here, the number ID in terms of percentage of, of students um, dropping from the proficient to, to less than proficient range, numeral ID 
is the one where we see the, the kind of the biggest drops across the board um, in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and um, some of the upper grades as well. So um, something to be aware of the fact that students um, have not had the opportunities, I believe, to read numbers and be, you know, get the correction that they need um, uh, during this past um, year or two years at least. One more thing I want to point out while I'm in here um, is this idea that um, we want to get kind of quick responses to these things. So you'll find that within this, there's a section here for each of the questions called next steps. I'm not going to dive into that right now. Um, we created this short list of ideas so that we can get that very quick turnaround, um, prompt, preventative, um, measures that we put into place to support students very quickly. So you'll find that each of the questions has a next steps document that goes with it um, to try to get that response very quickly. I do want to just contrast that with the um, uh, fifth grade one. So I'm going to go to um, a new uh, report. I saved this report a little bit earlier. So we have, you we have a couple questions before you move on, David. Um, okay. So the first question is, how much time is a mid-year and spring screener intended to take per student? So mid-year sp spring, spring screener. So the, the written slash digital portion of the screeners is generally a, a class time, right? Given that you've got 45 to 60 minutes for a class period, uh, the students should be able to work through it in about that period of time. And then the interviews are three to six minutes or so, depending on the grade level. They do get a little bit longer in the upper grade levels just because it's more complex, the learning that they're doing at that point in time. So one class period plus the short interview in the mid-year and spring screeners. Thank you. And the other question we have from a, a couple of our participants today is, could you <laughs> navigate backwards and, and look at one of those documents? I'll, I'll go in. Um, yeah, I'll go in there in just a second here. So so the uh, the fifth grade one, you can see here that we have um, a, quite a different kind of uh, distribution. Um, so so at this point in time, this and it's not Th these are all tied to Common Core in terms of the expectations, um, and so it is a little bit disturbing. But but very much when we are looking at um, these kinds of levels, we're looking at a tier two issue um, or tier one issue rather, right? That we need to think about. Okay, so if if putting fractions and decimals like these onto a number line is something that we expect of students, um, then really we need to think about that as a tier one kind of uh, thing that we need to respond to. Um, so a next steps document, um, for instance, here at fifth grade, question number one, you can see um, it looks something like this. And I can go back to a first grade one too. So just a few different ideas of, of what to do. Oftentimes these are um, uh, links to external resources like this one is, um, or uh, this one is a link to an app actually. And so that's uh, another one that's, uh, that's there. Um, I'll, I can let me go back. I just saved that first grade one too, since people were curious. Second grade, I'm sorry. We have another question to the group again about the next steps documents. Um, a participant sharing that uh, I know Forefront offers alignment with bridges for data in addition to the screeners. Do the next steps documents align with bridges intervention resources? Not directly. Um, we we certainly have not have not explicitly called out that that connection to um, the bridges materials and to the bridges intervention. There are certainly parallels in a lot of places, um, but we have not actually drawn those directly from the screeners to those interventions. But the the, the participant is absolutely correct that um, forefront can be used for gathering and organizing your curricular assessments, um, the results of your curricular assessments, whether you're talking about bridges or illustrative mathematics or uh, language arts uh, stuff as well, so that you can get the same kind of thing from that. And then also bridges interventions. So if you've, if you've adopted bridges intervention as your intervention program, that comes with, with some uh, pretty good uh, progress monitoring assessments in there. And then we would be able to provide you with the data uh, support there in terms of making sure that you're tracking that data and comparing it to those norms, et cetera. 
do have one one more question uh, sure. back to the slide about uh, what percentage of the class students do you suggest for tier one intervention compared to tier two interventions that those percentages we just shared? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it just it depends on your class, yeah. I think. You know, I mean, that's that's the really tricky part is that, you know, I have I've worked in a lot of schools. I've worked in schools where there are for this question, number one, where we will have no students who show up there for for needing interventions. And I've worked in other schools where almost half the students will will show up as needing interventions. So it really depends on the school that you're in. We we function. I mean, the, the assessments are designed more around the content as driving the need rather than the percentages driving the need. If we have students who we've got, you know, if we have students who are not reading these numbers yet, they're probably, they're, I mean, literally not able to access the instructional materials in second grade. We therefore need to really make sure that we're focusing on some of these things quickly and early. Um, and sometimes that'll need to be a whole class response. And sometimes it's a child or two. And so thinking about what are the needs for the child, I think is the way to go. Um, you saw the place value question earlier, you know, the 10 and three question. If you've got kids that are not doing 10 and three coming into the place value unit in second grade, knowing the, the amount of learning that needs to happen in terms of, uh, here's another place value one um, in, in, in uh, third grade. Um, so that, that becomes it. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll go, I'm gonna take a little bit of a bird walk here. I don't wanna take us too far away. I, 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 in, in this work with COMIT, the, the Colorado Metropolitan Math Intervention Team that, we, that I, I referred to earlier, we, we dug deep into this question of what is tier one, what's tier two, and what's tier three. The conclusion that we came that was our working definition that helped us to guide what is the difference between just simply well differentiated tier one versus tier two comes in the documentation and the progress monitoring. That is, if, I, if I'm focusing on a child and I'm being deliberate, like, like I need to help this child to meet this goal, and I set up that goal, and I say, I want that child in three weeks to be able to count fluently back and forth up to 120 or something like that. And then I, I establish a routine for teaching that child or that small group of children that, that we're going to meet that goal. And then I regularly monitor progress towards that goal. Even if that, if, if, if that work is in the classroom and I'm the teacher that's doing it, if I put those kinds of measures into place, I believe that's tier two. If on the other hand, I'm, I've pulled my, my formative assessments together and I've got a small group of students that I'm like, oh golly, they're not really ready for the rest of the lessons this week. I need to do some really quick work with these kids. I got my formative assessment there. I pull my group of five kids over to the table. I say, hey, let's work through this. Let's work through this. Let's work through this. Try this out. I get some learning out of that. Hopefully, chances are we do, right? And, and, and I don't really document it. I don't really set up a, a real goal around it. I would just call that well-differentiated tier one instruction. That's my definition of it. I can't find um, a lot of, of people who have defined tier two effectively. Um, and, and so I go with, I go with the fact that, that when I've, when I've set a goal, that's going to take more than a few days and set up a routine for doing it, then, then I would definitely do that. I do want to, while you're on that same topic, we do have a question that's, um, the difference between what are progress monitoring assessments? So would you consider these screeners different? or are they progress monitoring? And she's getting different definitions of progress monitoring assessments. Yeah, I, I, think, I think that there's two different kinds of progress monitoring assessments as well. In fact, there could be three. I think that there's tier one progress monitoring. When I'm looking at my school in general, like I did earlier here, right? This is, this is the country, right? When I'm, what I'm looking at here, right? But when I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, how are my students doing in general across the entire curriculum? And I'm monitoring that progress and I'm looking at the progress of my school and the, in, the kind of incremental improvements that we're making over time in our tier one, I think of that as progress monitoring. It doesn't happen very often. It's rather big chunks of time. Now, when, when I get to tier two or tier three, for that matter, and I'm, I have set a more specific goal 
that's got you know a, a smart goal, if you will. It's specific and it's time bound, and we know exactly what we're trying to do. And then I measure progress towards that goal or set of goals. It might be even that there's two or three goals that are tied together there. That is what I think of as tier two progress monitoring. So that's more frequent, and it should be, in my definition, tied directly to the goals of the intervention. So I hope that helps. Um, and I know that there, the, there's, there's not a ton of cons consensus on these kinds of things, but, um, but I think that it's important to, in, in, my, in my mind, it's just super important that the assessment is valid. And that is that it measures what you're trying to teach. Um, if, you're, if you're teaching you know, uh, geometry for a kid and then measuring their, their, their speed on a, on a times test, I, I, I find that to be not adequate progress monitoring. So hopping back in, we're getting towards the end of our time. So I, I wanna make sure that I get through this. So in terms of this question of predictive validity um, of the assessments, um, there was uh, just just a, a foreground to this when when we were using these in Boulder Valley School District where they were originally developed. Um, I did a number of studies internally there in Boulder Valley um, to to see the validity uh, and the predictive validity of the assessments from spring to fall and fall to spring, et cetera. And we found the the correlations there to be in the 0.66 to the 0.82 range. So there was a lot of correlation. Those are all unpublished um, correlations, but we certainly saw that year over year over year, we saw that they were um, consistently predictive. And then later on, you'll see that we have the, the reference down here to Wilkins, Wood, Woodward and Norton that was published last year or two years ago now. And in that research, we really focused in, well, on a number of things, but in particular, the second grade. Um, and we there were three quit, critical questions that really rose out of that um, research that we did there. And it, we focused on this idea of students' number, um, their, their verbal number sequences. And so we have uh, the start counting at 27 task and then um, start counting at 96, and then the nine blue counters. And what we found is that students who scored at level one on any two out of the task of the three tasks above those students in terms of their proficiency on the state assessment in following years were at third grade, only 7.3 of those students were proficient on the state assessment at fourth grade. Mind you, this is the beginning of second grade. At fourth grade, there were only 4.7. And then at fifth grade, we could still see that those students were struggling. Um, in the districts that we worked with on this one, there weren't really a system of, of structured interventions in place. And so we would love to do a post on this one where we where we look at, um, you know, when in, when proper interventions are put into place quickly and progress is monitored, if we can change this destiny, this is all kind of looking back. This was not looking forward. We just had a bunch of data to look at. Um, there was, I, I should point out, and if you go into the, to the document, and I see that Tamara has linked the abstract for you there, if you go into the document itself, you'll find that we did actually control for, for a few things. And if, if a student was really good with those kind of knowing their basic facts or structuring number as it's referred to sometimes, um, and if they were really good with reading numerals, um, it did pump some of these numbers up to like 18, 20%. But if they were um, low on those, ta on those as well, or it, it scored anything less than a three on those, um, then these are the these are the results that we got. So um, in terms of, of of targeting students who need attention quickly, um, the these uh, these number sense screeners um, are really highly predictive. So um, just a little bit about um, uh, kind of to wrap up here. Um, yeah, the universal screeners. It's about identifying students, right? We do want to identify students and the needs that they have, but it's also more. Are they are these students ready for instruction? What can we do proactively to prepare them for the instruction that's coming up? How will we respond to students' needs through targeted instruction as well as whole group instruction? So that question, right? Monitoring the efficacy of your core instructional materials. So this can be done through those, those screeners. 
um, and, and looking at, okay, so how did we got our program that's in place here? These are our screener results from year one. How about year two? How about year three? And then um, identifying pockets of need. Um, I mentioned earlier that there could be a disproportionate kind of distribution of students who are needing things. If you have your fall screeners and you've done it district wide and you find that you've got a concentration of need in two or three of your, of your schools, responding quickly to that is something that you can do through the screeners. Monitor progress on the key indicators over time. So that's why we do, we do these verbal number sequences in particular over time and directing teachers to, to a diagnostic. So, so this idea of, okay, this child is not counting well, let's, let's dig in there. Let's not just kind of, okay, we've got a shotgun thing that says that the kid is in the 20th percentile, but then we don't know where to look. Um, uh, we want that out of our screeners is to direct you to where to look. And then also recognizing that is as much about the adult learning as it is about the student learning. Listening to children, watching them count. We saw that earlier in the, in the, someone mentioned that they saw that kid count on. That's a trained eye, knowing that, that the strategy that that child has used. And when we can work with teachers to help them to learn um, what's going on, then that's, that's, uh, that's, that's us learning as adults as much as our students learning and learning about our systems. Um, so I'll leave this one up there. I know that there's a few more questions that have come in, um, uh, just in terms of if you'd like to contact us, you have more questions, um, reach out to Paul at Forefront.Education. Our website, Forefront.Education as well, is right there. Um, and I think, are we going to put that Facebook uh, link in there too, Tamara? Yeah, so I did just want to let everyone know today that I will be sending the recording link before the end of day, the end of the day tomorrow in case you missed part of the presentation or you would like to refer to it later. I will add the uh, link to join our Facebook group also here. Please do answer all of the questions. Uh, we do get spammers, so uh, there is kind of a gate. So please do answer all of those questions before trying to join the group. Um, and then you can connect with other teachers, interventionists, and, and math leadership that are also using the screeners or have questions about the screeners. Um, I'll also give Paul a quick opportunity to introduce himself. As you said, uh, he's a school partnerships lead here at Forefront and his contact information is on that slide there, David, number 17. Yeah, and I know that we, we do have some questions here also, but here, Paul, I'll hand it over to you. I'll just say uh, quickly, if you're curious about the data tools that David shared, uh, the Forefront software, or you wanted to look at professional development um, with the screeners, please reach out. Thank All right. You. Thanks, Paul. So there was a question about um, diagnostics. That's why, uh, Christy, that's why these are tied to Advantage Math. Those are the, the diagnostics that I have used in the past. I, I think that the, I find that they give the starting point better than any other assessment that I've used in terms of a diagnostic, those do require some professional development in order to get access to those and in order to use them um, appropriately. So Advantage Math from the US Math Recovery Council is where I would go with the diagnostic screeners or diagnostic assessments rather um, in follow up to the screeners. Um, so the blending of the needs identified through the screen and the needs of the identified curriculum. So if you have a curriculum, here's, here's my thing, right? If you have a curriculum that does not have some sort of number sense routine built into it, you should have that. Where kids are engaged in counting, where kids are engaged in mental math, whether in the upper grades, this might be um, number talks, in the younger grades, choral counting, student-led choral counting in particular, um, these kinds of things, uh, if, if they're not in your instructional program, I think that you have to think about how can you build something like that into your program. And if they are in your instructional program, then I think that we have to think about how do we encourage our teachers to do them consistently day after day after day, because those are so important. Um, so, so that's, thank you, Deirdre. That's a really good question. Why do sometimes it's a one to three scoring and sometimes it's a zero to three scoring? Um, so the, they're in the mid-year and in the spring assessment, I use the, the lowest level occasionally to be able to get a little bit more specificity on where these students are and their needs and also to raise the urgency in those areas that are so critical. 
um, uh, for, for uh, learning. So, so that's why there's sometimes there's that extra level um, that gives us more information and really draws our attention. Oh, the commit. Commit right now is defunct. It's it's actually a C O M M I T, um, but it's it's it needs we need to get it going up again. If you Google it, you can still find some documents. But that was the Colorado Metropolitan Math Intervention Team that was here in Colorado for quite a few years. Um, cognitively guided instruction, absolutely. Um, you know, I think that 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 there's a lot of overlap with that. It didn't. I mean, I certainly have, I'm very familiar with cognitively guided instruction, um, and uh, and so so it's it's one of those things that can be very very helpful. It's not necessarily tied into the design of the assessments as such, um, uh, but probably there's a lot of overlap there because um, there's a lot of commonalities. Um, well, I, I I don't know if I'd say that. Um, that choral counting in the upper grades is more effective than CGI. That that I don't know that there's any evidence around that. Um, but in those upper grades, I really like I really like number talks. To tell you the truth. So look, I'm, it, it is time here. It's it's now 11:30. I think we're going to wrap this up. If you have questions, float them our ways. Join the Facebook group, please. And um, and we would love to have uh, we'd love to have you on board and, and part of our community. Great. Thank you all for participating. Again, you'll receive a recording link tomorrow before the end of the day. Um, otherwise, feel free to reach out to our team, uh, join our Facebook group, and continue the conversation. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.